Great, and we're live. So welcome everybody to this remote interview. My name is Lisette and I'm interviewing people and companies doing great things remotely. Today on the line, all the way from Australia. Oh, happy Australia Day, by the way. That's right, yeah. <laughs> all the way from Australia, Andy Willis. Andy, you're a facilitator, a mentor, and a speaker, and your company is Work From Anywhere. I mean, I had to talk to you, so welcome. Yes, we, we're on. We're Definitely aligned on the same path, yeah, working from anywhere. For sure. So let's start with the first question, of course, which is what does your virtual office look like? And then we'll get into what you do. So what does your virtual office look like, Andy? Well, my, my virtual office is I work mostly on my own. Uh, so my, my, uh, it actually changes it, because I work from anywhere. So my, my workspace I, I work from on a daily basis when I'm home is uh, just a, a stand-up workstation set up. Uh, as I say, I work on my own. And other than that, I alternately, I go and work at a, a co-working space because I, I find uh, working at co-working spaces is just fantastic. You get to connect with people and uh, share ideas and uh, it's just great value. So I pretty much do the same when I'm overseas. I, I work from wherever I'm staying or I find a co-working space. Uh, yeah, just connect, so either work on my own or I... Uh, work with people either uh, physically at a co-working space or uh, do also connect online. So I, I'm a team of one at the moment. So I, I don't actually have a team. I, I work with, I do outsource some, some things and work online with some people. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much a bit solo at the moment. Yeah, that's a great way to go also because we can. And what about the co-working um, scene in Australia? Are there, is it, is it big? Are there a lot of places to choose from? Uh, well, just to put you in the picture, where, where I'm based is a, a very small uh, a town on the far south coast of New South Wales. So I'm not in a city. I'm not based in a city. And I, I do that by choice because I love that you know, I get to look at the beach every day and I get to, to walk on the beach where there are in a thousand people. So locally, uh, there is a, there's a local co two local co co-working spaces within... 20 minutes of me but co-working spaces in general in especially in the cities and in the larger regional towns are really starting to take off and uh, to to let you know i've actually got some premises in bega which is uh, uh, 20 minutes away myself that's currently got a tenant in it and i'm looking at uh, potentially creating that into a a co-working space myself oh wow Interesting. Well, let's talk about work, working from anywhere. WFA.life is your, yes. your website name. I love it. So yes. tell us about working from anywhere and what your company does. Yeah, see, uh, just a bit on WFA.life, which is a bit uh, how things work out. But uh, I tried to get WFA.com, which, of course, wasn't available. But I could get WFA.life, and I thought, well, that pretty much says it. So that's hence why we have the WFA life. It, it just works. But uh, where, how I ended up at, uh, with the, the business I've got now, it, it started, it's a bit of a uh, then and now thing. I did have a traditional business, which was a conference and event management business. I transitioned that business into being able to work from anywhere. Uh, and now all I want to do is I've moved away from that business and I, I, I want to help other people, similar to what you do, help other people uh, to work from anywhere. So, yes, the conference business, uh, you know, we took large groups of people from Australia, uh, franchise networks to different parts of the world uh, to do their conference. We've done everything from their travel, their accommodation, their keynote speaker sessions, their uh, their gala dinners. We've done everything. Uh, and it turned out that I didn't have to physically see a client uh, all day every day I you know my clients uh, which I saw half a dozen times a year and at the event were in the cities anyway so I'd had to get on a plane and, and travel to the city anyway so uh, during the, my time running that business I stopped at airports and spent a bit of time at airports and often picked up a book and one of the books which we chatted about off air was uh, uh, the Timothy Ferris book, The Four Hour Work Week. And whilst I don't, uh, didn't believe in the four hour work week, his concepts were solid, and that is, you know, integrating life and work and, and, and not deferring life and, until retirement. So 
uh, from that, I, I changed my business uh, to be able to work from anywhere. I, uh, over a 12 month period, I put my files in the cloud, got Skype, uh, phone number, done some other things. Uh, I was working with a staff member then, and then I thought, well, I booked a ticket to France uh, for a month, uh, headed over to France for a month back in 2013, worked from there, rode my bike, hiked up in the mountains, and nothing went wrong. I conversed and you know, tic tac with my staff member in Australia in the morning, and it was life changing. So from that, uh, I'm trying to get to where, uh, where working from anywhere come from, I actually, it changed my life so much that uh, I, I decided to step back from that business and I just wanted to help other people have that same realisation. And you know, as you do get on a bit, uh, as you get older, you, you, know, you see people that do actually uh, save up for their retirement and, and defer their life till retirement. Uh, but unfortunately, they get to retirement and they either die or don't have the the uh, the health to to do the things they want to do. So I thought, you know, it's a great concept, and you know, I could see I can ride my bike up mountains in the French Alps while I'm working, and and uh, something I might not be able to do later. I wasn't willing to take that risk. So why working from anywhere come about was I wanted to help other people do this because you know it. it it was quite an effect on me where I, you know, I then uh, was able to see other people uh, defer in their life, you know, and, and so that's where working from anywhere come from. So now we've, uh, we're up to the point of uh, creating programs and helping people uh, with their mindset, systems and technology to, to change their lives, basically. Did you think you were nuts when you were doing it? during the transition of, of going remote? Was it hard, did you say? Yeah, or, or did people think you were, I mean, what oh, did you think? So, oh, no, no, well, yeah, some people thought, no, you know, you can't do that, you know, you have to, you know, be there. But no, I, I'm very much one for, you know, doing my own thing. Uh, and I took it, you know, it was a transition too. I, I started off going home one day a week and working from there and, and working with my staff member just from somewhere. So I did transition. And then, yeah, I'm also a, a person that doesn't mind taking a risk. So I thought, no, what the hell can go wrong? So, you know, uh, yeah, but people did say, yeah, and people, I'd come back from France because uh, following that first year, I, I stayed there for a month the first year, and then the next year I stayed there for two months, and the next year I stayed there for three months. And uh, and that was it. I'd come back from over there, and my friends would say, oh, how was your holiday? I said, no, it's not my holiday. That's just my life. Uh, and that's the thing. People, they they put, they put separate these things. There's work and there's life. So they, they wait for, you know, if one hangs out for the weekend, uh, and potentially it rains on the weekend anyway, uh, or they, they hang out for their annual holidays, uh, and that's it. They, a lot of them don't understand. They say, oh, you're so lucky, but so many other people can do it. And, yeah, I, it, it, yeah it was a huge effect, and it, it, it really wasn't that hard. Okay, interesting. We're going to get into that. One thing I wanted to ask you about, though, when you did it, Time zones. I mean, Australia at the moment it's a uh, it's six p.m. your time, or a little after six p.m. and it's eight a.m. my time, and yeah. uh, and it's happy like, hour. <laughs> <laughs> if I seem a little groggy, it's uh, <laughs> not I'm used to waking up this early. <clears throat> but uh, how do you how did you deal with the time zones? You said that you would get up in the morning and talk with your assistant back in Australia. And, uh, but, you know, it's, it's significant, I think, with, uh, with I, I've heard a lot of people say that they have trouble working with Australia, at least from this part of the world, because the time zone difference is so great. Yeah, and I, I, it, that gets down to, you know, how you, uh, you, you manage your workload, basically. But fortunately, I'm, I'm a, an early morning person, so I, can't, I absolutely can't work at night time, but I can get up at you know, five, six four in the morning and that's that's my time of day so for me it was it was really easy especially when I first got to France for instance because you know, you're suffering from a, a bit of jet lag so you're still on Australian time so I'd be bright and bushy awake at 4am uh, so I'd just start work but then as it settled in I'd get up at 6am and you know I'd tic-tac uh, on, on Skype or 
uh, messaging or, or a call with uh, my staff member and for probably two hours yeah uh, and once you've got things set up that that's all the time more or less you you need so I'd start early which actually suits me uh, which is her end of the up end of the day but still uh, within work time and uh, we, we'd work it that way and, and as far as you know the business I had dealing with uh, communicating with with clients can be done by email and they can pick them up whenever they feel like it if I had to make a call then uh, you just done it on, you know at, at the time that, that works for everybody but a lot of my clients didn't even know I was away because you know, I had a Skype phone number that uh, is, was an Australian number, but if it rang and I, I picked it up in France, they were, they did, they were none the wiser. Oh, that's it. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Because often I've, I've also done the same thing in the past where I had a company um, that had mostly US clients and I was based in Europe and I just never told them, I never brought it up because it would distract them from the conversation somehow. They would be yes. afraid to call me because they didn't know what time it was. So I just never said anything. And then eventually yeah. it would come up as they would talk about the weather or a holiday or something, it, you know, it would come up eventually yeah. and then they would be completely surprised. But uh, yeah, it can be seamless. So, so, yeah. so that two hours of overlap time was just enough. To yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and uh, the other thing with that, uh, and I see is uh, potentially the problem a lot of uh, uh, people face in, in business and uh, work is when they are working together in that office, there's a lot of distraction time. So it, it, if you're having to schedule two hours to, to collaborate, guess what? You get the other six hours to focus. You don't have anyone interrupting you, interrupting you during the day, and that's that's hugely productive. So that six hours turns into four hours, and then I go for a bike ride. Right, really. <laughs> <laughs> because because you, because you can get more done. You don't have you know, people stopping by and asking you questions. You've had to schedule uh, and focus uh, both your uh, time that you have to communicate with your staff member and your other time. So it just works. And you know, people don't see this because they go to the office and, and they don't realise how much interruption time uh, takes away from their day. Yeah, indeed. It can be. I mean, that's one of the things that I hear a lot from people is that they actually work from home or from anywhere to be productive because of all the interactions and things that are happening at the office. So, yeah. I yeah. Like and I especially yeah, the transition from being time-based to being results-based like if you can get your work yeah. in two hours great like why sit around for eight if you uh <laughs> yeah go on a bike ride yeah absolutely go and live a little yeah <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. so what's hard for you what what are some of the the challenges that you're that you faced in transitioning to this type of life oh you, you know i really didn't have that many that many challenges uh, and possibly uh if you did have to explain to someone getting them to understand that you were you know you weren't on holidays you were working uh maybe sometimes work it working on your own uh if i you know you don't especially if you're in france you don't have anyone around you that, that speaks english no one to sort of bounce ideas off but uh if i if i'm here i, I work a lot on my own but then i just uh, if I need to connect with people or, or get some some feedback, I either get online or I, I go and work at a co-working space. But yeah, no, I really can't say it honestly uh, that I, there was many challenges. A lot of it's my a lot of it's mindset. Interesting. So you made yeah. the decision, okay, I'm going remote, and then just slowly transitioned into yeah going remote. Interesting. Yeah. So, what does what does your company do? What are what are the services that you offer clients? Uh, well, working from anywhere itself is is currently in development. So, we're developing a, a program that's going to be uh, launched in regional Australia. So, not in the cities. Uh, I'm going to start it locally, and then it'll be uh, launched regionally. And it's a program to 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 help people with all these issues. And that is the mindset, the systems and the technology so they can actually work from anywhere. And, and the people I'm targeting, targeting are, are small businesses, small operators, small business operators and individuals. So uh, there's, there's that part of what we offer. We also offer uh, consulting services with uh, online technology and tools. Uh, and we, we, sh we share uh, uh, 
information on on tools and we share a lot of content on as you do on 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 how you can better work remotely and and free yourself up so it's a lot about uh, sharing uh, the other thing we do have which is going really well we've just started we've got a thing called the hot seat uh, which you may be aware of uh, that's that takes place over you know in a lot of mastermind groups but the hot seat i've developed and it's going so so well it's amazing and that's where someone has a business idea or a concept uh, they sit in the hot seat and we have a, a, a panel of six to eight people that sit around they have a structured uh, presentation that uh, addresses each area of their their concept or their business idea and they get feedback from this diverse range of people so you know you're at a dinner party and you, you, you mention an idea and suddenly people feed into it and that idea grows. The other thing it does though is they're testing their assumptions. So it's quite confronting, uh, but it's enormously, uh, it, the energy and the the, uh, the level of conversation in the room is just incredible. So that's something we're developing and we've just started doing. We're up to uh, about the third one of those now where people come in for two sessions, they have a, uh, the first session is their hot seat session, and then they come back a month later, which is their accountability session, and they report back on the action they took as a result of the feedback. But it's quite challenging. I actually, I was the first person in the hot seat and, uh, with my working from anywhere business, and it's very confronting, but enormously valuable. Oh, sure. Oh, you have a dog, it sounds like. Yes, I do have a little dog. Cute. Uh, <laughs> a little uh, Maltese is my daughter's dog. My daughter's no longer here. She's up in university, but the dog's still here. I mean, I just I have a neighbor cat that comes over, and she just ah! you can hear the creaking, but she just opened the door herself to come into my house yeah. to hang out here and look at the mice that are <laughs> that are outside. And I and also I don't know if you can hear, but I live somewhere where there's bellbirds, so. The, there's always bellbirds in the background. I don't know if you can hear. I can hear ah! a little bit. Yeah. It's <laughs> All the way from uh, Australia, people, you're getting the yeah, stuff from Australia. Yeah, yeah. And just down the road, there's some kangaroos you'll be pleased to know. Ah, cool. <laughs> Very different than in the Netherlands. We don't, we don't have that. So in terms of the discipline and productivity, you're working on your own. How do you stay motivated? What are, the, what are, your, what are your tricks, your productivity hacks? Yeah, well, the one thing that I've uh, uh, really got better at because I'm very distractible uh, because I love technology and so, so I'm always chasing the my natural personality chases the, the next shiny object basically so ah! I've I've got myself I use uh, Asana I don't know if you've used Asana before which is more or less a, a project management tool and I make sure I only put ah! three or four things on that list and I I allocate time to them and only try and focus on those three or four things rather than having a, a list of uh, a dozen uh, things on the to-do list and then get to the end of the day and still have a nine at the end. Ah! Yeah. So, yeah, and that, that's the thing that, that's really helped me is actually allocating uh, time to each of those, those, uh, those tasks and don't ah! try and focus on too much. Yeah, I've got the uh, the list of 20 things that I only get three. I mean, you know you can only get three things, right? But what do you do with the other 17 things? Do they just stay on the list or do you just have to pray? Hey, use Asana. Asana's great because uh, you can put them in sections called today, upcoming, and and later. So just put them in today's list. They still stay in incomings. Uh, and then tomorrow they become today. But you don't see them. Don't look at them. That sounds good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I use a tool called Toodle Do. It's a very, very simple oh, yeah. task management tool. But yeah, I, I can still see all the other things. And I, yeah, it makes my list look really big. So I like this idea of just three to four things. Yeah. Keeps the panic. Because like, as an entrepreneur, you can always be doing something, right? There's a. Uh, yeah. And I'll qualify by saying I'm not always that good at doing that. <laughs> I do fail. <laughs> good to hear. Good to hear. <laughs> There's always that shiny object. Oh, that new online tool. Oh, I've got to try that. <laughs> okay, so you have Asana. Any other productivity hacks that you use? Uh, no, that, that's yeah, more of 
Well, I said, I, I have uh, recently been using a, a method of, you know, trying to work for 30 minutes and then have five minutes off work for 30, which is the, was it the pom, Pomodoro? Yeah. Yeah, pom, uh, that doesn't always work either. But, you know, other than that, I just give in and go for a bike ride and come back. And actually, I want to address this because I'm, uh, I'm about to do a podcast episode about health and remote working. Oh, yes. It just seems like we could be at our desks all day. And actually there are some days when I'm like, I wake up, I look at my phone and then I go to my laptop, I'm looking at my screen. And then at night I'm watching movies on my iPad mini. And I think, Oh my God, I haven't like looked at the real world yet today. It's been completely all day long and I haven't moved. Like I look at my step counter and it's like 900 steps and you think, Oh my God, no. (laughs) So, I mean, it seems Uh, like you're a cyclist and a hiker and, and, uh, and and looking very physically fit. So what's your thought on this? Uh, and this is what's well, not even a discipline it's a habit to get into but I don't find it very difficult to do but it, it would be easy and just because you can work from anywhere you can work all the time you just don't you, you've just got to learn to stop so I have a, a routine I I I work to my energy levels so uh, before this podcast for instance I knew I was coming on this podcast and I don't work after six o'clock normally and I I wasn't going to, I'm usually out riding my bike. So I knocked off earlier and went for a bike ride and then come back and here we are. Uh, but it's really so, so important. I Every day, every day I go to the, the beach and either have a walk or a surf uh, and then I start work. So, and then I always, I always finish work. I finish work in the afternoon because I like to start early. Uh, I finish by four o'clock and, you know, I just stop and it's important to get that discipline. I know I'm healthier now than I've ever been, you know, my whole life because I'm active every single day. And it's a matter I've learned that is uh, if you can't get something done or, you know, you've run out, just stop doing it. You know, otherwise it's easy to do the next thing and the next thing is, no, it'll be there tomorrow. And yeah. That, yeah, it's a skill, but it's I'm healthier now than I've ever been. Uh, like I say, I, I work to my energy levels, uh, and that is, you know, just because we've been conditioned to start work in the morning and finish in the afternoon, you don't have to do that. If you're feeling like an afternoon nap or an afternoon walk, you know, you're getting a bit tired, have a nap or have a walk and come back, and you'll be more productive. And, yeah, you know, I, I actually don't find it very difficult to do at all. I just I stop and... Uh, it's great. I feel fantastic for it. Yeah, that is, I think, one of the key benefits of working, uh, being able to work from anywhere. I remember working in an office and while we were allowed and even encouraged to go out and take walks, you know, in the afternoon, we even Mm. worked in a big office building by Lake. It was rarely done by anybody, if I can, if I'm honest, even me. I mean, I would do it for a week and then I'd get back to just eating lunch at my desk again. And it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting, though, that the momentum, it's so hard in, in, a, in a setting like that. It's so hard to get up and out. It's weird, actually. Yeah, and I found the other thing that happens in that scenario is it becomes a I've got to be seen at my desk thing. You know, up about, you know it's that peer pressure thing. Oh, look, uh, uh, Lisette's gone for a walk. She should be working. She's, you know, when you could, you know, you might have, I'd rather go to work early and have a, a walk for an hour during the day. Uh, but yeah, no, it's that it's that uh, peer pressure thing where you know people think they have to be seen to be at their desk. They could be seen, they could be at their desk, you know, uh, not being productive because they need a walk. They need some fresh air. Yeah, I can't tell you the number of times when I go out running and I have to put a note on my phone like, okay, when you get back, that I just had a brilliant idea. Note to self, because <laughs> you, know, like, you need to get out and get a think. You know, you need absolutely, to- and you yeah. don't realize that until you do that. Every time I go for a bike ride, I call it my think tank. And I don't, and it's like running. You don't try to think of things, but you, there's two things you think of. I think of all my ideas, which have probably cost me a fortune over the years uh, <laughs> on the bike. Yeah. You, know, you come up with all these brilliant ideas. The other thing you do is you solve your problems because your mind is, is clear and it's, it, you know, you've got that fresh air and without even trying, you, you, you're solving problems that you can't do at your desk and you're, you're thinking new ideas that you will never, ever come up uh, while you're at your desk. Right. 
Yeah, I spoke with a creativity expert from Sweden in one of my interviews, Theo Heron, one of my favorite interviews. And he really said, you have to mix up your environments in order to yep. stay creative. And that when you go to the same place every day, you start, yep. instead of being creative with people, you start to whine. You know, you start to whine because <laughs> you get in a rut. It's the same people, the same environment every day. And that we need to work where we're most productive and wherever that is. And I loved that concept. Yeah. So what do you think people need to think about before they make this step? What are some of those? Mm. I, my advice would be don't think too much. Yeah, I think that's the problem. Think people think too much. Yeah, what's what's the worst thing that you know could go wrong? You know, uh, have a bit of a think about it. But hey, uh, have a look at what you're doing now, and and, and just ask yourself, you know, do I have to? Do I have to be at that place at that time to be doing this? If the answer is maybe not, then yeah, oh, you know, jump in. Sorry, I'm a jump in person. You know? Okay, that sounds but, scary. That sounds scary. Yeah. I mean, clearly, yeah. people need to have some sort of a, a safety net or a financial stability. You don't even ah, your face says I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, the, okay, I'll, I'll give you one thing, and that is have some systems in place. Have some okay. systems, that, not technology systems, but you know, some organisational systems, some operational manual type things. So you've got your, your processes and, and, and your things that you do every day uh, documented. And, you know, you've got a, that sort of plan. But, yeah, other than that, yeah, what's the worst thing that could happen? I don't know, you're... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what's the worst thing that could happen go back to working in the office like hey that's true you can always get another job like there's always yeah. another job out there that's true yeah and this guess what there's not another life it's true i really like the idea of um i, I think i read it on your website the mini retirements like yeah. we don't need to wait until we retire, especially in the Netherlands, they're increasing the retirement age. You know, it's like, seems like every couple yeah. of years, retirement age goes up and up and up. And it's like yeah. now 67 and a half. And I think, oh man, if I have to wait until I'm 67 and a half to go on these yeah. mountain hikes and uh, yeah, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Well, uh, and yeah, they can be mini retirements. So as we say, like just integrate your life. I, you know, I spend three months in France. It's not a mini retirement. It's just, uh, living life but yeah you know, many retirements and that, that's one of the things that uh, uh, Timothy Ferris uh, uh, talks about in his book but so it was one of the things that sort of got me thinking about it yeah don't I like wait. yeah don't wait I like that integrate because we now can with the technology yeah. the tools besides Asana are there other tools that you like and that you like to use Oh, geez, don't start me on tools. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> That's my, my, my favourite thing. But, yeah, but the top ones for me are things like uh, a RoboForm, which is a password manager. Okay. Absolutely can't live without RoboForm. Like, I don't know about you, but uh, I look up RoboForm. Basically, one, uh, one password gets you into the, the system, and it's a password manager. So you need one password that's really weird and cryptic uh, and then I must have 200 passwords in there and we get new passwords every day uh, so absolutely can't live without it and it's on my computer my devices so uh, and the other thing it does is you uh, you can generate passwords so you're not using you know France 200 2013 on every password you can generate passwords and they say for you so you don't have to remember them uh, there's Asana, which I've mentioned, which is yeah. uh, I use for project management, as well as I can now create templates uh, that, that I'll use as within my product selling, where uh, you can create templates of processes for, for people to how to use tools, how to how to do operational stuff in their businesses. Uh, I use SmarterQ, uh, which is a social media sharing plus some tool like Hootsuite, Buffer and things like that. But I've, I've used Hootsuite, Meet Edgar. SmarterQ is amazing. <laughs> it's just incredible. Uh, it's really easy to use. It, it does everything from sharing your media to, to your social media to, to finding content, to, to schedule it. So you just, you know, basically you schedule your, your social media uh, Monday morning, find your content at the same time, 
uh, load it up and then set and forget it's all scheduled so that's zero for accounting and I use get pocket for uh, which is really handy when you're you know uh, on the internet finding deep, uh, really nice good articles that haven't got the time to read them you just save it to get pocket tag it which is really good and you can just read it later so there's some of the tools I use Typeform, Worldmate, Skype, Canva, uh, lots of them. But yeah, they're, they're the big ones for me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's some here. The Smarter Q is one that I haven't heard of. I'm a Meet Edgar fan. And, uh... Uh, hey, I, 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 I come from Meet Edgar. I, I, that's where I, I had Meet Edgar. I sort of loved it. Um, I've gone to Smarter Q and I'm... I'm not an affiliate of SmarterQ or anything. I just love it. I went from MedEdK to SmarterQ, and it's amazing. It's we. I'd love to chat to you about it. It's just incredible. It's oh, different. It's amazing. Definitely be checking it out. Yeah. So, we're running out of time, which is crazy. But one thing that I really wanted to, to talk to you about is the reason why I first actually heard about you is you were organizing a conference which now makes sense knowing about your conference background and you were organizing yeah. a, i think it was a work from anywhere conference work, yes that's right working from anywhere conference okay and so what was your idea behind because i think it's a great idea i mean there's been several online conferences they're also really good but i just was curious about your your conference yeah and this is where it, it started you know you start with a big idea and the working from anywhere of what I wanted to share and and the idea was to share it at this big conference and it was going to involve you know everything from freelancers to remote workers to to bloggers to to everyone so this is great big community but as I went through through the time then I, I decided you know what I what my why and what my purpose was and my, my real purpose was uh, helping people like me that had traditional businesses but will and work in the tr traditional way i wanted to help those people uh just do that simple like or simple transition so in the end the conference was was huge it was going to be fantastic but it wasn't going to serve you know the realization that I, I come to this was where working from anywhere could really uh, help people so I found the focus I found the direction and the conference actually wasn't going to serve uh, my my direction whereas yes the conference itself still a great idea and it was going really well but yeah uh, and still can be done but it, uh, I decided to move towards uh, where where I was going to make the most difference to, to the people that uh, I could connect with Makes sense. As a good entrepreneur, we learn to, uh, we have an idea, but we don't always have to follow through with every idea. We have to sometimes uh, stop and focus and prioritize. Yeah, yeah no, it, and it's a tough thing to do, but uh, yeah, it's what you've got to do. And I'm, I'm really happy uh, in the space I'm at and uh, the direction I'm going. And yeah, it just all feels fantastic. Yeah, you seem really happy. That's a, I am. <laughs> <laughs> for people who are listening, uh, don't wait till retirement. Let's start integrating work and life now. It is possible. So um, last question, which is if people want to get in touch, we've already mentioned the website, so wfa.life, but what other ways are there to get in touch with you if they want to learn more? Yeah, well, uh, Basically, the, the website's got uh, all my social media uh, can, links on there, so and also a, a contact me, and uh, there is a place on there to uh, uh, to book a, a Skype call with me if anyone wants to just uh, have a chat. So using another one of our, our great tools, which I didn't mention, which was Calendly, which I absolutely love. Uh, so yeah, so go to the website. That's the easiest place. Uh, it, it's all there, and very happy to. Just chat to people, yeah. Just connecting. That is the yeah. great thing about working online is it's really easy to connect with people from all over. Uh, the and it's it's just a buzz, you yeah. know. We're connected, you know, and it's it's amazing the people you connect with and that you end up connecting with the like minded people. You know, you can find them if you if you do it right. You know, there's other social media where you have thousands and thousands of uh, followers so-called followers but then you know there's other ways i think we connected a lot maybe on linkedin where you can find some really quality connections with 
you know, quality rather than quantity. So yeah, it's, a buzz, it's a buzz to be able to, us to be talking the other side of the world. We're both on the same path, really helping the same sort of people. It's incredible. Yeah, I think so too. There's some days when I think like, wow, I just spoke with somebody in Brazil, somebody in yeah. Moscow, somebody, you know, somebody in Finland and somebody in the US all on the same day. Totally incredible. Never yeah. used to be possible. Never used yeah. to be possible. And let me just say, you're doing an awesome job. I love your work. I, I, I have been following you for a while. It's, I just love what you're doing. It, it, it's fantastic how you are uh, connecting with people from all over the world and sharing that. So fantastic. Well done. Ah, oh, thanks. Thanks. I, uh, I love this work. I'm total, I would be doing this. People always ask me like, what happens if a, you know, if collaboration superpowers doesn't work out? And I thought I did, I would do it anyway. Like even if yeah. I had a job, I would still be doing this. It's not about the money. Yeah. It's, a, it's a mission somehow. It's like a, you have, to, you have to do it or I'll burst. I don't know. And, and that's right. It is not all about money. And uh, you learn that through life that, yeah, money, you know, the more money you have, the more time you don't have, the more money you want, the more stuff you buy that you don't need, you know. Uh, if you I've often wondered, actually, these super rich people that have multiple houses and yachts and stuff, and I think, when do they use it? Like, it was, like I can't even imagine. I live in a very, very small apartment, and I look at these big houses. I've been house hunting with my husband. I look at these big houses, and I think, what would you do with all those rooms? I don't even know. <laughs> like, I just can't imagine what you do with all that stuff. So Yeah, but, and the other thing, I, what do you do with it? But look at all the time it takes from you. It takes your life away if you've got to, you know, go to that boat every now and then or, you know, clean the house or, you know, manage all those assets. That takes time away from, you know, when you could be out enjoying yourself. You've got to manage your assets that you can't use because there's too many of them. Right. Sounds dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> one, one yacht is enough, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Go and rent one. You've got enough money, you rent one. Let yeah. someone else look after it for the other 11 months, you know? Yeah, indeed. I've been sailing before, you know, and you go sailing and think, oh, it wouldn't be nice to buy a boat. No, it's not. I'll just rent this and then give it back and come back next year. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Spend time with friends, connecting with people all over the world, going yeah. on bike rides, yeah. Absolutely. Let <laughs> someone else manage the, manage the properties, the boats, and everything else in your life. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Mm. Love it. All right. Get rid of your stuff. No, I'm kidding. Don't, you don't have to get rid of your stuff. <laughs> well, I've got bikes and, what? I've got bikes and surfboards. That's all I need. Awesome. Yeah. I've got a pair <laughs> of running shoes and a good headset. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, to, and a bit of technology, of course. Of course. We, we need our gadgets <laughs> and our apps. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Apps, not yachts. That's what, <laughs> that'll be the new tools. That's now. it. Yeah, there's our new, new catchphrase. Well, thank you so much today. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. And uh, I really hope that people get in touch. WFA.life, everybody. Thank you. And until next time, be powerful. Hey.